This is Andre with Inside EVs, and today I'm in Stockholm, Sweden, for the unveiling of the Volvo EX90, the all electric equivalent to the XC90. And while the two cars may look somewhat similar, they actually share no mechanical components. This is actually based on the same platform that underpins the Polestar 3. So it has the same 111 kilowatt hour battery pack, the same motors, the same charging capacity, and everything else. It is a bit more luxurious and a bit more practicality minded, plus, it's a three row SUV, so. Um, it will appeal to a different audience. Let me show you around the vehicle. But before we get more into this, please make sure to subscribe to the Inside EV's YouTube channel to not miss any of our videos. First, I just have to show you the EX90's ridiculously cool headlights. They have the industry's first application of daytime running lights that actually open like a human eye to reveal the projectors that light up the road ahead at night. While at the unveiling, I couldn't get enough of seeing them in action. They give the Volvo EX90 a very futuristic feel, but without feeling like an exaggeration, even if they only serve an aesthetic purpose, which is to preserve the hammer motif, both when just the DRLs are shining, as well as when the actual headlights are on. You may have also noticed the bump above the windscreen. That's where Volvo put the EX90's LiDAR which can apparently see in complete darkness up to a distance of 250 meters, which is around 820 feet. The vehicle also has ultrasonic sensors all around, including sideward facing ones embedded in the side skirts, plus cameras pointing in all directions, eight of them in total. Volvo also equipped the vehicle with cameras inside to not only detect if the driver is drowsy, distracted or unwell, but also to alert the driver if he forgot a small child or animal inside the vehicle. They're apparently so sensitive that they can detect a small dog panting. During the Volvo EX90's international reveal, we chatted with Robin Page, Volvo's head of global design and UX, who explained why the vehicle looks the way it does. When I asked why the company didn't go for a more daring approach to the Volvo EX90's design, Robin Page suggested that Volvo buyers are more conservative and they prefer simple minimalist designs as opposed to unneeded over design. I asked him why the model didn't come with a fake grille, like many EVs do, in order for the brand look to be be maintained across the range, and he simply replied that it would go against Swedish design principles of minimalism and purity. There's no style for style's sake here. He also pointed out that the EX90 has longer front and rear overhangs compared to the XC90, and that this is done to improve aerodynamics. They haven't made its drag coefficient public yet, but it's apparently very slippery for this type of vehicle. If you're one of those people who think all EVs should have a front trunk, well, you will be pleased to know that the EX90 does have one. It's not very large though, with a maximum load volume of 37 liters or about 1.3 cubic feet. Enough for a charging cable and maybe a shopping bag, but probably not both. Moving to the side of the vehicle, its shape is instantly familiar, looking like an evolution of the XC90's design. You can't really see the aforementioned extra overhang, possibly because of the large 22 inch wheels. These will be the largest available, but there will also be 20 and 21 inch wheels. The 22 inchers come with removable plastic aero covers to hide the bolts, but they also look really cool. All sizes of wheel will have an aero design, but the largest ones are apparently also the most aerodynamic, according to Robin Page, who also noted that the smaller size wheels have different aero solutions, but they are still designed to minimize drag. The most striking part of the rear end are the tail lights. They are an evolution of the signature Volvo style lights, but now the vertical part that goes up the back side of the C pillars is not connected to the main part of the clusters located lower down. Volvo opted to do this for added visual interest and uniqueness, but without straying too far from the familiar look that everybody associates with the brand. The interior is a stunning exercise of minimalist Swedish design. The focal point is a 14.5 inch portrait style infotainment display where the vehicle's functions are concentrated. Volvo even relocated the hazard warning light to the screen, although it's still present as a physical button in a panel above the driver, for legal reasons. The manufacturer notes that in using chips from Nvidia and Qualcomm, it will ensure the smooth operation of the software with fluid graphics and animation, and in this way, it also future-proofs the vehicle as the hardware will be competitive for years to come, allowing the vehicle to be improved through over-the-air updates. 
One area I wasn't so sure about are the steering wheel mounted controls. They are touch controls, similar to what you may have seen in Mercedes-Benz or Volkswagen models, and they will probably suffer the same issue as in those cars. Robin Page said their solution around the problem was to set the controls more inwards towards the center of the wheel, further from where your hands rest on the wheel when driving. The manufacturer seemed very proud of how sustainable the EX90's interior will be. Instead of leather, it has created a leather-like material called Nordico, which sounds like a Nordic take on Mercedes Artico artificial leather. You will be able to choose either this material for the upholstery or a very pleasant wool-based fabric option that everybody seemed to be very excited about, and for good reason, since it really felt plush and luxurious, giving the vehicle a distinct cozy feel. Before we move on to more technical matters, I also have to show you the unique unique mood lighting inside the EX90, which is actually embedded into and shines through the wood trim. This is very subtle and you only get to see it in the dark, but I was able to capture it on camera and I have to say it looks really unique and tasteful. With a usable capacity of 107 kilowatt hours, Volvo estimates that the EX90 will be good for around 600 kilometers or 372 miles WLTP. The EPA rating will surely be lower. And for reference, we can look at the mechanically very similar Polestar 3, whose EPA range in the same configuration is 270 miles. The battery pack is made up of 204 prismatic cells grouped into 17 modules manufactured by CATL. DC fast charging the EX90 can be done at up to 250 kilowatts, even without resorting to the use of an 800 volt platform, like Porsche and Kia for instance. Talking to Lutz Stiegler, who is Volvo's electric powertrain and battery development boss, he explained to me that it's all about the amperage, which can be as high as 600 amps for vehicles designed on this platform. However, he pointed out that not all fast chargers are able to muster this much amperage. Most don't go any higher than 350 amps. So it's worth noting that you will only be able to achieve the claimed charging time from 10 to 80% of around 30 minutes from a charger which can actually supply the 600 amps needed. For reference, from a 50 kilowatt charging station, now very common across Europe, you will have to wait over an hour and a half for the vehicle to fully charge. The Volvo EX90 will most likely only come with the dual motor configuration. The vehicle on display had the 350 kilowatt or 510 horsepower powertrain, which is the same as the Polestar 3 with the performance pack. The vehicle isn't quite ready for production, which is why Volvo only had one that you could see the interior of at the event. This Volvo EX90 is probably hand-built specifically for this event. That's most of what I learned about the Volvo EX90 during my trip to Sweden. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching.